Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to a Toast to the Men Network with your guy SD Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, toasters, if you are not subscribed. Also, hit the notification bell so you're notified when this content drops. Let's go. Got a little cigar here, hand roll. Toasters, I want to talk about, uh, well, first off, rest in peace to Melvin Magoo Barcliff. Magoo was one half of the duo Timberland and Magoo, the super producer Timberland and Magoo started as a rap group back in like 89, I believe. And uh, they found some stardom probably in 2003, maybe a little bit before then. No, probably 96, they found some stardom. I think that's when I first heard of Magoo. Uh, Yeah, it was like 95, 96. When they found stardom. So, man, they had been in the game for a while before they really took off. But rest in peace to Magoo. It was reported that Magoo passed yesterday. Uh, I want to touch on that a bit, but I want to broaden the conversation also. And see, of course, what we can learn from this. And just have us reflect on some things, how we treat each other, how we speak on one another. And most times it's just a reflection on how we feel about ourselves. But uh, I liked Magoo. I liked his voice. I liked the way he wrote the beat. And uh, I thought his skill set, his cadence, his voice went very well with Timberland and uh, Missy Elliott's beats, the production. I think it meshed well. I liked them on that song, Up Jumps a Boogie with Aaliyah. I think Missy was on there. Timbaland was definitely on there. And the brother just wrote that beat, man. I loved his voice. Had a very unique voice. I don't know what you would call it. Uh, kind of high-pitched nasal, you know, something like that. It was very unique. And, you know, the brother just stopped making records one year. You know, like I said, I, I heard about him like 95, 96. I think his last album was 2004 or 2003. And he just stopped. He just stopped. Like, what would motivate a brother to start making records or get into the industry in 89 and just stop once he hit stardom in 96? Stop in like 2003. What will provoke that? And when his comrades, his friends, went on to continue to make records and have success with the Leah uh, passing early, uh, Genuine was a part of that group. Uh, that that um, that that group under uh, Devontae Swing. Devontae Swing had a production group. I guess you call it production slash artistry group, uh, Swing Mob. And it was Genuine, Genuine, Player, Missy, uh, Timberland, Magoo, uh, I think it was somebody else. I don't think Aaliyah was a part of that. I think she, um, yeah, she wasn't a part of that. But um, anyway, they broke off from that, had their own success as a tandem, as solo artists, and um, yeah, I like Magoo. But the thing is, Magoo will get a lot of flack um, about his skill set, about his rapping skills. And I don't know if they didn't like him technically, his rap skills on the technical side, or they didn't like his voice. Because I said, yeah, he had a very unique voice. And roll cigar, y'all. Very unique voice. And it seems like not only with Magoo, but with several artists, there's a campaign or an agenda 
to kill these guys' dreams, to get them out of the business, to bully them, uh, to disturb them. I say that because Magoo was on many lists as one of the worst rappers in the rap history. He always made the list. And that's the thing with us. We unalive ourselves. We do it to each other. We cut off the legs of one another. And this is the nature, I would say, of the culture. Uh, Hip hop. And we allow culture vultures or guests in the culture to do it also. You have magazines or publications like Complex, Double uh, XL, Source. We go on and on. Uh, we got blogs that do it. They make these lists about the worst rappers. One just came out recently, earlier this year. Um, man, can you imagine doing something since you were a kid or having a dream, having a vision, and you make it to a certain point, you make it to fame, to a point where you're popular enough to even be put on the list. You know, that's a feat in itself, that you're on the list. They do know you, but you make it to this point. And then you have these publications and you have people in comments. I think more so it's the publications that do the most harm and the energy the people fuels them with. You have these people, these publications, put you on the list as the worst rapper. Man, just imagine how that would feel. This is something you love to do. This is, uh, you've gotten to a point you've always dreamed of, you always talked about. And then you have someone, more so than not, cannot do what, more, more, more so than not, than so can do, can do what you can do. They're a critic on the sideline for the most part. But we got others that are doing it also, but I'll get into that. So there was this big campaign. I remember, man, people were saying Magoo was one of the worst rappers. Publications were saying it. I would hear radio personalities say it. Social media wasn't really a thing like that um, in 96, you know, between 96, 2004, when he retired or stopped making music for the public. Really wasn't a thing like that. So, but you would hear it on the radio. You read it in magazines, publications. Uh, certain people would give interviews. They would say that. Man, can you imagine that? People just killing your dreams, your hopes, your aspirations. And it seems like overnight. But, you know, people are entitled to an opinion but I think people need to be responsible with their opinions because we got to look at like, what is the motive? What's the end game? What is this rooted in? Uh, I would never get on the internet and say somebody's whack. Do I like every artist? No, I don't like every comedian. Uh, on a on a artistic level, I'm not digging their work on an artistic level. Every, every comedian, every R&B singer, every rapper, I'm not digging everyone. But to get on the airways, to send out a vibration, a frequency that they're garbage or they're whack or they're the worst, 
Man, that's foul. That's foul. Because not only are you cutting off this man's legs, you're cutting off his livelihood. Think about how many people eat off of this guy. And I say guy, I'm going to keep saying guy as in man because I just don't see it happening to women. And there's some women out there that I don't dig, but I just don't see it happening to women a lot. Um, but man, we crush our men. I mean, it's like a mob type behavior. Like everybody comes at them. I've seen it done with Chingy. Um, and Chingy has some jams, man. The rapper Chingy. Um, I've seen, seen it done to a few people. It's like their careers end overnight when this happens. And I could have sworn Chingy had at least five or six jams that were in heavy rotation on the radio. BET and MTV. Uh, there was a scandal that came out with a trans woman who lied on them. Then people started, I think that was a reason, <laughs> an excuse, a, uh, an opening for people to start saying he was whack. A lot of that is jealousy because the brother had number one hits. Uh, maybe on the technical side, it wasn't complicated. His lyrics were not complicated or he didn't have any double entendres, anything like that, any similes, you know. But he made hits. And a lot of people hate that, especially your rapidly rap dudes. And so you can see a campaign forming to get get Chingy out of the game. And it worked. It worked. And I thought Chingy was talented, man. But it worked. Um, we do that. We do that to our own. And like I said, I don't think we see the bigger picture or, or we don't care the impact of it when you cut off a man's legs, his livelihood. And even though you may not like Chingy, you may not like uh, Magoo, these people are feeding people. They're employing people. Not just their, their family, their blood family. They are employing people who feed other people. And so uh, when we do that, when these campaigns form, it causes a bigger impact than we can imagine. But we got to start checking these publications, the complexes, the double XLs, the sources, the bosses going on I was looking at a um, an interview Dame Dash did with ah what's the name of it uh, Math Hoffa it's Math, Math Hoffa's podcast I can't remember the name of it but they were trying to get Dame to compare rappers and choose rappers and pit them against each other and uh for the most part, he stayed diplomatic, but sometimes he wouldn't answer it. He just wouldn't answer the credit. I mean, answer the question. But when he did, he stayed respectful and diplomatic. And Drink Champs does this too, you know. They have a segment where they compare artists. They pit artists against each other, and the guess is to choose who they like over the other one. And uh, it can get disrespectful. It can get nasty. And I don't even think a lot of those comparisons are logical or make any sense. But it's good for controversy. Um, I guess disorder, drama can create dollars in the long run, I guess. But... Um, that can get outright disrespectful. And recently, you know, Dream Champs Nor Nori asked Jim Jones, who would he choose within the group clips or brothers, Pusha T and Malice, or brothers, who would he choose? 
I was like, damn, man, they, they pitting, they make you choose between brothers? That's wild. Within the same group. Uh, something something devilish about that, man. Something's very devilish about that. Um, why not just, if you're going to do it, why not just pit them against another group? You know, but you ask this man to choose between brothers. That's wild. That's wild. I recently heard DJ Clark Kent tell someone, I think he was talking to Angie Martinez, I think. I may be wrong. But he told her that he can't listen to The Chronic, the album The Chronic, all the way through. He said, because he likes Corrupt, he can listen to Daz, he likes Snoop, he likes Dre. He said, but when it gets to RBX, I have to fast forward it. Think about that, man. Somebody in your fraternity talking about you this way because they are in the same fraternity. That's wild. And you know, realistically, if these guys are neighbors or will see each other in passing in their neighborhood, DJ Clark Kent wouldn't even make that statement. But we feel safe and disrespectful, being disrespectful. We feel safe and being dismissive when we feel like we won't come across that person. And these are older gentlemen, older gentlemen doing these things. DMX did it. You know, you can blame substance abuse or whatever. I don't know, man. When you're intoxicated, inebriated, whatever you do, that's that's who you are. That's your subconscious presenting itself. And uh, Del Metz went on Breakfast Club and just, just a lot of people. Drake, uh, Jeezy, Rick Ross, you know. Just wow, very disrespectful. But this is what we do to each other. Now, fortunately, you know, people didn't take DMX serious because he has substance abuse problems, because he'll go off on these disrespectful rants, not the first time. But if you have a huge following and people really respect what comes out of your mouth and you talk negatively about someone, about an artist, about a rapper, that can have a huge impact on their career. Talib Kweli, he dissed Magoo. He had Isaiah Rashad on his podcast maybe a year ago, and Isaiah Rashad was explaining that he grew up like in the voice without even seeing these guys because social media wasn't around, but hearing these guys like stat quo, he really got into their voice and he loved Magoo's voice. Tablil Kwali, a veteran in the game, a respected lyricist in the game, cut him off and goes in to be disrespectful towards Magoo. This happened about a year ago, maybe a year or two ago. Very disrespectful. Don't say anything online about a man you would not say face to face in a closed room. You gotta really live by that. Um, very disrespectful. He, he got very disrespectful. Said he copied, said Magoo copied Q tip, Q tip style or whatever his voice, and that's that man's voice. When I heard Magoo, I never thought of Q-Tip, never. And Isaiah Rashad told him that, he's like, I don't think of Q-Tip. But uh, Talil Kweli was adamant about that and just, and just went on with the disrespect. 
even though by his own admission, people have told him that he needs to put respect on Magoo's name and really check out Magoo's music. He wasn't trying to hear it. Now, if you're not even trying to hear the man's music, but you have such a strong opinion, that's just ignorance. That's foolishness. Talia Kweli is a respected lyricist, has a strong following. But, you know, he's been known to talk sideways too, and he's been kicked off Twitter many times. But people respect his pen. And so, uh, cutting off another man's legs. That's wild. But I'm going to tell you what's even wilder, how we treat each other. I was listening to Be High ATL, his podcast, and he had Wicked on there, who was uh, one half of the duo Ghetto Mafia out of Decatur, Georgia. And Wicked is a frequent guest or co-host on the podcast. And uh, they announced the death of Magoo. And Biha goes on to say, man, it's either Biha or Wicked, or maybe they're in unison on this, in agreement on this. They're like, man, it'd be better. I would enjoy more. I would enjoy more there being a concert with all the deceased rappers over there being a concert over the rappers who are living right now. And then they proceed to say, yeah, I will have Magoo right there with Tupac and Biggie and DMX. Cut it out, man. Like, cut it out. Cut it out. Now, Cricket, cut it out. Cut it out. That's another thing we do. We dismiss people. We're disrespectful towards each other. We cut off the legs. We cut off livelihoods. And as soon as they pass, it's a RIP. Rest in peace. It's uh, I would have him perform right with Biggie and Tupac. Stop it. It's He's a legend. You didn't do that when he was living. You didn't come to his defense when he was living. You probably didn't play, play his music. But now that he's deceased, you, you do this? I've never heard Beehive mention Magoo, uh, ever. And I like Beehive's personality. I like his podcast. I like his energy. But the truth is the truth. That was wild. I think that's even more wild than disrespect and being dismissive that you give flowers and you go over the top and be disingenuous to that point of calling Magoo a legend and saying he belongs right up on stage performing with Biggie and Tupac and DMX. That's wild. But this is what we do. And I don't see it being done in any other genre not pop, not country. They don't have worse lists, not R&B. They don't make these kind of lists. It's it's hip hop. It's a toxic culture where we unalive our own. We cut off the legs of our own. And so, man, we just got to be cognizant of what we say, what we put out into the universe. Because um, what was this man dealing with? Died at the age of 50. Was he dealing with depression? No. And everything, you know, doesn't have to be uh, you getting hit with the bullet. A lot of this man is depression. These guys are dying early due to depression, due to health problems, mental health, emotional health, physical health. 
And uh, I believe it's a lot of times their legs are cut off, their dreams are killed, their community, their fraternity has turned their backs on them. Man, look at Craig Mack. You know? It's wild. We'll take each other out with the bullet and with our, with our words. Yeah, we got to start treating each other better. It's okay to have an opinion, but you don't have to have the dark energy about it. You don't have to be so passionate of really breaking someone down to where they don't have a career. Like, Chinga's career is gone. I've been seeing him on Vlad doing interviews recently, but, you know, that must be a strong brother to withstand what he went through and still, you know, stick around and he looks healthy. The flip side to that is if you are a person who the people attack, who people form a campaign against and try to get out of here, you got to question yourself and ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing? Are you doing it for the approval of the people, the masses? Are you doing it for the love of the people? Or are you doing it because this is truly something in you that you need to get out? And regardless of the people, uh, support you, if the masses support you, you're still going to do it. Because if you stay the course, if you keep going, the masses may not support you, but I guarantee, man, you will have your group of followers, your group of supporters that will support you. And you may even, maybe something like a cult-like following, you know, and you can uh, still make your rounds around the country, around the world serving some people, the real people who really mess with you. So, you know, there's always two sides to the coin. You gotta question yourself, like, why am I doing this? Is it, is it coming from a genuine place? If the people turn on me, would I still do it? You know? This brother Magoo stopped making music in 2003. I think his last album was 2003, retired in 2004. That's wild. And that happens to a lot of people. That happens to a lot of artists. And a lot of times these are artists who truly love the artistry, truly love it. But you have other artists who didn't have this dream of being an artist, who did it because they saw other people making money from it, but it didn't come from a pure place, it came from a superficial place or a survival place, but not a true gift that was placed in you. And so they mimic the current styles. They make a hit, they get a good following, and uh, they could have a, a good productive five to seven year career, you know, and maybe still eat off the residuals, the publishing, and maybe dive into some other things, you know, when the limelight dies down as far as, you know, the music. But the true artists, and I think A-Ball and MJG uh, made a song about this, the true artist always pays the cost. I think it was eight ball. I think it was eight ball on his uh, double CD lost. He has, he has a song that the artist pays the cost, something like that. And so, uh, yeah, that's wild. It just, I saw that earlier. I saw what Beehive did giving flowers, 
and making that that bold claim, that 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 wild claim. And I remember what Talib Talib Kweli did and said about Magoo. And it just had me thinking, man. Like we we got to treat each other better. So rest in peace, Magoo. Uh, and anybody after, like I said, man, stick to your dreams. Make sure whatever you're doing is rooted in the right place, coming from the right place, and stay the course. Your time is coming. It's always toasts from me to you. Love. Peace.